Let us proceed to item number 31. The product of two consecutive natural numbers is 306. What is their sum? Is it 33, 35, 37, or 38? So uh, I think no, in many cases, some of you would do uh, factoring, or some of you would do like uh, something different, or perhaps you will approach this using quadratic equations. No problem with that. But actually, there's a, there's a simple technique that we could utilize if we have our calculators. I will just present to you the shortcut. All you have to do is get, the shortcut here is, get the principal square root of 306. Principal square root means the positive square root of 306. Using your calculators, you could see that the square root of 306 is approximately 17.48. And 17.48 is between what two integers? It's between 17 and 18, right? So therefore, the two numbers are 17 and 18. If you multiply that, I'm sure you will get 306. So the two numbers are 17 and 18. By checking, 17 times 18 is 306 indeed. And therefore, these are the numbers we are looking for. And that their sum is 17 plus 18, which is 35. If you answered letter B, great job. But if not, what's important is that we are learning in the process. 32. Consider the square roots of natural numbers from 1 to 100. How many of them are irrational? So is it 90, 59, 48, or 10? Now, remember this. Square roots of perfect squares are rational numbers. Example, if you have the square root of 9, that's 3. But Square roots of non-perfect squares are irrational numbers. So they are, they are certs. So example, if you have the square root of 14, that's approximately 3.74. We could see that there are 10 perfect squares from 1 to 100. These are 1 squared, 2 squared, uh, 2 squared 3 squared, until 10 squared. Or you have your 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. And since 10 of them are perfect squares, which means to say if you take the square roots of these 10 numbers, their square roots will be rational. And since 10 out of the 100 are rational, then that means that 100 minus 10 or 90 of them are irrational numbers. Hence, letter A is the correct answer. 33. How many decades are there in three millennia? Is it 30, 300, 3,000, 30,000? So we have to be reminded if we have to be reminded of the following. One decade is 10 years. And three millennia is a millennium is 1,000 years. So three millennia, millennia is the plural of millennium. Three millennia is 3,000 years. Hence, by division, we could say that there are 3,000 divided by 10 or 300 years, there are uh, decades rather. There are 3,000 divided by 10 or 300 decades in three millennia. So if you answered B, great job. So Good thing I was able to find a certain error in the slide, so I have to change it from there. Thank you. 34. If one inch is equal to 2.54 cm, approximately how many 
inches are there in 50 centimeters? Is it 18.50, 19.54, 19.69, or is it 127? What do you think? So in this case, so we could actually set up your proportion. Let X be the measurement in inches. So this is one inch into one uh, inches to cm, inches to cm. So by that, we have one centimeter is equal to 2.54 inches equals X and inches is to 50 centimeters. So again, product of the means equals product of the extremes. So 2.54 times x, it's 2.54x. 1 times 50, it's 50. And since we're solving for x, we will divide both sides with 2.54. And 50 divided by 2.54 is approximately 19.69, and that is letter C. There are 19.50 um, inches or 50 centimeters is approximately 19.69 inches. 35. Solve the system 3x minus 2y equals 7 and negative 5x plus 8y equals negative 7. So we could actually use substitution, elimination, or Kramer's rule for this. For the meantime, I will be using elimination. So if this is the first equation and this is the second equation, I have the intention of eliminating y. So I will multiply both sides of the of equation one by four. And with such, multiplying each of this by four, three x, that's times four, 12 x, negative two y times four, that's negative eight y, seven times four is 28. That's why you have here 12 x minus eight y equals 28. And I have here the second equation, and since the, I just copied it. And since I could see that eight, the first and second equation, the, these two equations now have the same uh, coefficients for y, except that they vary in terms of sign, then we could actually both, we could actually add both sides of the equation to eliminate y. So adding them, we have, 12x plus negative 5x, that gives you 7x. This becomes 0. 28 plus negative 7 is 21. And 7x equals 21, so it follows that x is 3. With x equal to 3, we could actually substitute it now in any of these equations here. So I chose to substitute it in equation 1. We have 3 times 3 minus 2y equals 7. So that's 9 minus 2y equals 7. Subtracting both sides by 9, we have negative 2y equals negative 2, or y now is equal to 1. Hence, x is 3 and y is 1, letter B. 36. How many terms are there in the expression 3x plus 2 all over 3, negative 5xy plus 3 times the product of z plus a minus 1? Is it 4, 5, 6, or 7? What do you think? If you answered 4, letter A, you got it right. And you might ask, sir, how come? Remember, this is a division. You have here the division. Even though you have a, remember, terms are, your terms are separated by plus or minus. But here you might ask, sir, there's a plus here. So you should treat this as two terms. No. This 3x plus 2 all over 3 is just one term because of this division sign. If you have the product of a constant, 
of a numerical coefficient with variables, this is also treated as one term. And you might ask, sir, z plus a is one term and three is another term. But remember, we are talking about their product. So this is also one term. And this negative one is just one term. So we have one, two, three, four terms only. Letter A. 37. If the letters of the word diamond will be written next to each other, like diamond, 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 and so on, what will be the 1,214th letter from the left? Is it D, I, A, or F? So to solve this problem, we could actually see that there are seven letters in the word diamond. And since they occur in repeated intervals, so it's good that we divide them by seven and note the remainder afterwards. So with the help of your calculators, you could check that 1,214 divided by seven is equal to 173 remainder three. And so this remainder tells us that if you start from the left, you have, we have here one, two, three. So A is the third letter from the left. So I'm sure that A will be the 1,214th letter from the left. Letter C. Okay, letter C which is letter, which is A. 38. What linear function has a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 2? Which of these choices do you think is correct? We have to remember that we have the form y equals mx plus b. This is what you call the, what? This is what you call the slope intercept form. And y, okay, and m here represents the slope and b represents the y intercept. Okay, m slope, b as y intercept. So with these givens, by substitution, you have y is equal to 2x plus 3. And um, in this case, I subtracted both sides by y. So the y here become, became negative y on the left side. This 3 became negative 3 on the right. Uh, sorry, this y became negative on the right side. This 3 becomes negative on the left-hand side. So we have negative 3 equals 2x minus y. And in this case, if we uh, use the symmetric property of equality, then you will have 2x minus y equals negative 3. Letter D. 39. How many diagonals does an undecagon have? Is it 33, 35, 44, or 45? So from here, you could actually see that the formula for the number of diagonals is n times n minus 3 all over 2. I hope you could recall that. You could actually verify that as well uh, in other sources. So since an undecagon has 11 sides, so n is 11 here. And by substitution, so d equals 11 times 11 minus 3 all over 2. That becomes 11 times 8 all over 2. 11 times 8 is 88. Divided by 2 will get will give you 44. So I'm sure that an undecagon will have 44 diagonals, letter C. 40. Which of the following is a possible geometric mean? between 4 and 36? Is it 6, 12, 15, or 20? What do you think? We have to remember, guys, that uh, 
when we speak about geometric mean, if we let X to be the geometric mean, or it's a term between, in this case, a term between 4 and 36, such that there is a common ratio in this case. So for example, if I multiply 4 by a certain number, it will become X. If I multiplied X by another, by that certain constant, it will become 36. So what could be the value of X for this case? So you could actually use ratio and proportion. That is, the ratio of X and 4, that's X divided by 4, it's equal to the ratio of 36 and X. That is, the ratio of the second and the first is equal to the ratio of the third of 36 and the second. So from here, multiplying both sides by 4X, others call it cross multiplication, we have X squared equals 144. And since uh, to get the value of X, we have to get the square root of both sides. So we have X equals plus minus the square root of 144. Remember, if the in, if the index here is positive, is a uh, is a is even rather sorry, if the index here is even like, uh, if you have your square roots, fourth root, six roots, eight roots, there should be a plus minus sign in between them, because in this case, no, if you square a positive or a negative number, it will always give you positive values as long as that number you're squaring is a real uh, non-zero number. So which means x is equal to plus minus 12. So the value of x could be 12 or negative 12. And among the choices, 12 is possible letter B. I hope you got it. <laughs>